welcome to this video. Uh, the title should be um, watch this if people hate you or if you've got haters or something like that. This idea just popped into my head and I want to share it because maybe this will help you um, to, to deal with people who are judgmental, who my nose rings love to make an appearance in my videos, just so you know, they always kind of stick out the bottom. Um, that's just a fact about me. Anyway, um, yeah, if you're struggling dealing with people who are disapproving or judgmental or cruel or just hating on the stuff that you have to share, or you feel any kind of self-consciousness or you, 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 you've internalized this or you, you whatever, um, Sharing is caring, first of all. So you are caring to share yourself, your authentic expression with the world. That is an act of care. I don't care what anybody says. That's an act of care. This is under talked about. Secondly, cherry trees produce cherries in, in the right, you know, environment with the right nourishment, whatever. Apple trees produce apples. Okay, pine trees produce pine cones. Grass grows and it is green with chlorophyll in its cells. Okay, my point being, these are elements in the natural world that exist and they serve a function and they, they grow, they produce, they exist, they bear fruit, they bear seeds, whatever. Humans are the same. Humans are the same. Okay, so do we have people who walk into an apple or are there people in this world who walk into an apple orchard and they look at apples growing on an apple tree and say, that's wrong. That's just wrong. I can't believe this apple tree is producing apples and not cherries. I can't believe this apple tree chose to make their apples red. I mean, purple is way better. Like, apple trees should take after what grapes do and make their apples purple. Isn't that stupid? It's kind of funny, actually. It's kind of funny. And uh, if someone gives you shit on your, on your expression on the internet, which I, I feel like no one really even tries to, you know, negatively comment on people's things in person, um... Most of the time it's just online. So I guess this is geared towards you if you're dealing with this stuff online or in person, whatever it is. Um, as long as you are in integrity with your creative expression, your authenticity, you are sharing yourself with the world. That's great. Like you're checked, you're good, you're, you're doing you and there's nothing else you can do because you're you. I mean, you can do anything you want, but you should do what is natural for you. You should do what's right for you. Um, if it's safe, of course, if, you know, because sometimes it's not safe and safety is a blessing. And I hope that it, you know, is safe for everybody to be themselves in the world. And unfortunately that's not the case, but if it is the case for you where it's safe to share, then please share yourself. Um, and you know, you're not doing anything wrong by making the art you want to make. <laughs> You're not doing anything wrong by thinking the thoughts that you want to entertain. You're not doing anything wrong by being your natural self, even if it's not understood, even if, even if it seems like there's no room for you in the world. Even if you got a little streak of freak or evil in you. I mean, God designs us with impulses, with, 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 with our nature to be a certain way. And... I'm going to say it, this is going to be controversial for some people, but, um, and I, and, and, and I want to back this up from a Kabbalistic perspective as well. And even from a Christian perspective, well, I don't know if Christian Christianity views it in the same way that Judaism or Kabbalah does, but there's something that we know to be the evil inclination in according to Kabbalah, which is the mystical core of Judaism and the evil inclination is part of nature. It's what is inside of us that makes us kill and fight and things like this. Um, every kid has like stepped on a bug. You know what I mean? 
like just to see what happens um kids get in fights adults get in fights and there are murderers and there are butchers and hunters in the world and in kabbalah and i'm just gonna pause right here because this is an extremely extremely sensitive topic um but i say it to really stress that there is no such there's no such thing as a natural inclination or impulse or whatever that should be suppressed. The problem is that we don't have room to safely express these things in the world. And that's why they turn inwardly and 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 are expressed through crimes and, 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 and things that actually harm other people. Um, but in Kabbalah, I watched this YouTube video about the evil inclination and um, how to address it in, you know, the worst of the worst, you know, murderers and rapists. And I'm so sorry if this is triggering, but um, it's an important conversation, I think. And I think that I'm mature enough to have it. And I hope that my audience is um, as well. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, there was a dissertation on the evil inclination and how we would address it in people who are murderers in society. Well, you know, we, we put them away and we protect our society from, from people if they, if they are unable to channel their urges to murder. Um, but someone with that level of evil inclination in their spirit that is driven to murder um, would perhaps you know, repent in this life and come back in the next life as a, as a butcher or be assigned a role as a butcher um, to express and, and have catharsis and a proper outlet for this natural evil inclination. What I'm saying is that we are all animals. We are flesh and blood and bone. We are sex and shit and rot and decay and, and organisms. We are clumps of cells. We are very visceral as visceral as it gets. There is no denying our nature. There's uh, like, a, like an infinite spectrum of varying degrees of, of that nature. And it's not wrong to have aspects of that nature. It's what's wrong is, is that, is the repression of it and the lack of creative outlets, supportive outlets to, to release the energy. Because energy, if you think of it like emotion, energy, emotion, it, it, it comes down through our phys physical bodies. And if we don't discharge it through, through some form of expression that protects us and protects the other people, the well-being of us and other people. If we don't have that, then it slowly eats us away on the inside. It's like, yeah, it's like a parasite. Um, so that's an extreme example, but I am an extreme believer that no instinct that can ever come through a human body is wrong or should be repressed. I believe that instincts need to be expressed in ways that protect, protect individuals. Okay, so I'm not an advocate for going around and killing people. I'm not. Um, but I know that when instincts are not expressed and let out, they will rot inside and sit there and create fermentation and pain and horrible things. Okay, so that's, again, that's a very extreme example of my belief and my experience. I, it's not only a belief, it's a direct experience. So back to if someone's giving you hate, they don't get it and they don't need to get it. I mean, eventually they need to get it you know, in like an evolutionary, like reincarnation, cycling through life's kind of way. It is a lesson that I think, you know, people should learn at some point or other, you know, that 
there is a vast spectrum of humanity, whatever that even means, um, in, in the world. And we, we, we need outlets for, for that stuff. We can't hold it in. We can't let it stay in us and poison us just because someone else thinks it's wrong. And the same goes with, with art and with self-expression. And even with, you know, these like, weird mental illnesses, I don't like saying mental illness because I, I genuinely perceive it in a different way. I think mental illness, I, I hate those words because it, it, it indicates that to me, it, it, it sort of pathologizes nature and spirit and existence is made of like so many different spirits and nature is comprised of so many different spirits you know like for example a, a mother lion or alligator can be brutal in the right circumstances and and that and that ferocity and that killing energy it's it's a part of nature and it's interwoven with extreme compassion you know this mother aspect um she is so biologically spiritually driven by survival and protecting her young that she will what is the word with starts with an m not mange but like just mutilate like tear apart a living breathing creature driven by protection driven by the spirit of just her cells her biology and human beings are the same we see it we see it all over the world there are wars there are like like psychological wars there are physical wars spiritual wars all these things all these all these uh ways of expressing our human nature in 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 that are that are they're that harmful to other people i think that a huge chunk of humanity is unevolved in terms of understanding how to express, or I shouldn't say unevolved, I should say disconnected, uh, disconnected from nature, from God. I swear to God, this is like the 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 root of 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 war and all of these ailments and whatnot. It's like because people are disconnected from nature, from God, from spirit, and from different kinds of spirits. Um, this is getting into territory that I feel like I. It's it's I know it's so sensitive and I and I don't really speak about these things these beliefs much because I never really felt safe or comfortable to but I think it's time I think it's time um, and I know I'm not the only one who feels this way um, but yeah I genuinely uh, you know coming back to kind of a personal scale and dealing with hatred dealing with being bullied dealing with you know being judged those judgments and that hatred is a reflection of those people's repressed or in internalized um what do i say they're, they're their own evil their own darkness their own lack of connection to the spirit and i i'm really kind of wanting to be extremely careful when i talk here because I'm not saying that judgment shouldn't exist. Um, I judge everyone. I judge everything. Judgment is essential. Judgment is a tool to use uh, to be able to discern in the world. Um, judgment um, allows me to let in people that are good for me and to push away people that are bad for me. Judgment is important. Um, but when judgment is as silly as I'm going to kick an apple tree because the apples are red and not purple and I think that they should be purple and I'm not accepting that this apple tree is an apple tree and an apple tree is not going to become a purple apple tree just because I want it to. Um, that's like more what I'm talking about. Um, but, you know, I just I go on deep tangents and um, I just I'm taking it to this extreme level to this far out level, which I do with everything um to make a point to bring it back to what i feel like the roots of it are i feel like when people bully other people for being themselves or when people are afraid to be authentic because other people have a problem with it i think 
I think it's it's as silly as someone shunning nature for being nature. And that is my view. And that view also applies to what I was saying about the evil inclination and, you know, doing horrible things. I, I think that that's another example that a lot of people generally don't understand. Um, I think personally in my life, like having gone through experiences where I've been abused institutionally and in the family unit and, um, yeah, um, in institutions like mental hospitals and, um, rehab facility. I, I was shipped off to a troubled teen industry in Utah because I was almost trafficked when I was 17 years old because of abuse that I endured during my upbringing. And I have been, I have seen from the inside, um, the, these, these institutions psychologically and physically of the, the medical system and of human trafficking and of the troubled teen industry, which is basically a cult. And I can get more into this another time, but I have seen really intimately into these things and have experienced abuse in a lot of different forms firsthand. So I think I have a very valid opinion and point um, and experience and, and, and knowledge to share and, and, and this idea to advocate for that like the people who do these evil things, the people who think it's okay to stuff you in a box and feed you drugs and keep you locked away from the outside world and to, to eliminate your suicidal urges, you know, AKA the medical system. Um, I went through that when I was 16 or the people who try to frost the windows and physically, you know, harm you if you don't behave in a way that's appropriate instead of giving you an outlet or finding an outlet for you to express your severe trauma. Um, in other words, the troubled teen industry that I was in, we were in a cult we were abused, we were, we, we had no privacy, um, we were physically abused sometimes through restraints, um, and we were fed the most poor diet in the universe. Um, I gained 15 pounds and developed IBS at this place. Um, and then, you know, with human trafficking, um, I was vulnerable and naive and um, devoid of my basic emotional human connection needs from my own family, my mother. And so I, with this void, I was seeking out emotional connection. And so I met this person who was very evil and he planned on trafficking me and he talked about killing. And, um, we had him, you know, background checked, um, through a private investigative, um, um, uh, like business and him and his family are running a trafficking ring currently and this is a story that i'll talk more about at some point but it's all coming out now but i share these pieces of my story because even having been abused institutionally and on an individual intimate relationship level i believe that the people who created these institutions and these behaviors that exemplify the evil inclination and the and the heinous things that the evil inclination is capable of causing people to do those people are not inherently wrong in the sense that they have the evil incl inclination and they are acting evil in these ways but they're expressing that evil inclination in ways that are harming other people for example, loading them up on drugs and imprisoning them and exercising this insane power and this need to control or this hunger for power, um, you know, rapists, abusers, murderers, whatever, like all these people, I've, I've come in contact, intimate contact with people like this throughout most of my young life. And I'm advocating that basically in the world we need more spaces where those people can you know first and foremost like yes lock them up put them far away from everybody else so that they can't harm people but provide cathartic ritualistic outlets for them that they can channel their evil inclination into so that we can reduce their suffering and give them a purpose and a role on 
on, on the planet, even if it doesn't happen in this lifetime, reincarnation is real. That is my belief, my experience. Um, and that's another thing I can go into. Um, but this is my belief, okay? So if you're dealing with something like someone's judging you or hating you online, this is just what I have to say about this. They don't get it. They don't get it because we're living in a world where there is no room for the evil inclination. Someone who has the thought, the will, the, the energy to judge you, to, to just listen to the voice of the devil in their, in their head and to bully you for it. Um, first of all, never take that personally ever. Second of all, um, something that I think that we need to recognize as a culture, as a society, as a world, is that these people need different outlets. They need outlets that aren't going to cause harm to people. And that's it. That's it. It's kind of similar. This stuff is very dark and heavy, but this is very, very real to me. But it's, it's similar to how in the, you know, for example, the BDSM world, the world of BDSM and sex, like people, people find consensual, healthy, well thought out ways to express their trauma and their dark urges. Um, and people literally seek peop other people out to pair up and, and express their masochism or, or sadism or whatever it is that they have, you know, fetish for or this like tendency or this urge for. And that is one example of um, channeling the evil inclination or, and not to say that it's evil, but, but, you know, we don't go around grocery stores whipping people, do we? No, we save that for the dungeon. <laughs> um, that's just one example. And another example is like, I don't know, we don't go around like pulling back our, our, our arrows on our bows and like shooting people. We don't do that. We take it to the fields and we wear camo and we blend in and we wait for the moose to walk by and then we kill it and we process it to sustain our family for a year or two or three years or whatever. We put all the meat in the freezer. We pray over the animal. It's holistic. It's not harmful. Yes, the animal dies, but we need to hunt to eat. We hunt. We are, it's nature. You know what I mean? And I know some people have different values you know, if you're vegan or vegetarian or, or whatever, and you don't, you know, kill, like, I mean, you, I, I feel like I am just trying not to walk on eggshells in my head, but I might be tripping on some people's ideas. I might be tripping some people up and, um, I'm happy to have a conversation about it, but yeah, um, this was, this was a lot. Um, this was where my mind went wanting to share a message about dealing with hatred or judgment um my belief coming back around full circle is that we need outlets we need outlets for our abusers to express their evil inclination that's really the core of what i'm trying to say and i believe that it's an extremely important mindset to have personally I don't hear a lot of people talk about these things, especially in spaces that are designed for healing and support and whatnot. I don't hear a lot of people speaking from this perspective. I think this is a more generally more religious perspective that I have because it, it lines up with Kabbalah. Um, and you know, I'm by no means advocating to keep yourself in an abusive situation or to condone abuse um this is not that this is why i ra rarely talk about these things openly because it is such a sensitive thing um but these are my beliefs um and these are my experiences i think that we need more spaces in society openly publicly ritualistically that allow the expression and the release of energies that when turned inward become harmful and destructive instead of cathartic. We have a long way to go as a culture, as a, as a Western American culture. Um, 
you know, we're shy about death. We're shy about, about evil. Like we're shy about darkness. We're shy about our own darkness. You know, culturally I'm saying it's, it's not in the open. Dark is not out in the open. Dark is not, it's dark, you know? We need more spaces to express that and to be in touch with it and to healthily, cathartically release it. And I swear to God, I believe that this is the key to ending wars. I said it, I said it. Um, I know this is gonna trigger so many people, especially on social media, but my prayer and my hope is that I can have sophisticated conversations with people who are willing to actually have conversations. And that doesn't really happen on social media usually. So I'm sharing this long format video with some potentially controversial thought, controversial thoughts um, that will actually engage people and create room for more productive conversations. Like let's create some spaces to grieve together. Let's create some spaces to scream and to, and to thrash around and release pent up emotions. And let's create more spaces to let our own darkness and our own evil inclinations be released without harming other people. Let's, let's, let's work on that. Let's do that. Um, and I hope this can be a window into, you know, us exploring possibilities for how to do that. And, um, for us to connect with the importance and the significance and the impact of how, you know, what it has on our own lives and on the lives of people around us and on our cultures and communities and societies as a whole. I think people would be so much more relaxed if they weren't walking around with, with pent up emotion and also without being disconnected because a lot of people are robotic, um, nine to five, same routine routine every single day. And I'm, I'm not saying that everyone who lives that life is robotic by any means, so maybe I should correct my words, but there are is still a whole group of people on earth who are um, disconnected from their spirits and their emotions because it's not safe to even cry in their workplace or in their community. Like that is such a small example, but it's so real. Um, There's so many narratives about what it's okay and not okay to do and, and how to behave. And in some places it's okay to be this way and in other places it's not okay to be this way. You know what I mean? And then rewinding to the beginning, you know, if, if, if you're expressing your, your, your art and people bully you, I mean, I'm an artist and I'm self-conscious about sharing my stuff because I'm afraid of being judged. I'm afraid of, you know, backlash or, or not being seen in the way that I, I intended from my heart, which is, you know, something I have to get over. Um, but yeah, like even being an artist and wanting to go dress exuberantly and then go to the grocery store in a crazy outfit. It's like, well, I mean, I'm kind of afraid to do that because I don't want to, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really even afraid to do that. I think, I mean, there were times when like I felt more comfortable in costume than in, you know, regular, whatever this is. Um, and you know, but I, I was, I was afraid to go in the world dressed how I wanted to dress. Um, and you know, I'm more relaxed now and I have outlets and spaces where I can express that part of myself. And I try to only do what feels natural and what I feel called to do. And some days it's just like, you know, t-shirt and shorts is like the way to go. Um, but coming back full circle, um, the core message, the core message of what I want to say in this video is if you experience an impulse or an aspect of your being I think the solution is expression in a way that protects people and keeps people out of harm's way. As long as people aren't being harmed and as long as there are spaces that are cathartic enough and connecting enough to help you express what is alive inside of you, but nobody else can understand or get behind or whatever, that's important. And yes, this is including people who are evil. Um, 
I believe that evil, evilly inclined people have a right to express themselves in a way that doesn't harm themselves or other people. And this is a lot for some people to swallow. I know that. I know that, but I firmly believe this and I have felt shy about sharing it and talking about it because I wasn't ready. I don't think I was ready to share. I don't think I was ready to face the possibility that some of my close friends would cancel me or, you know, fight or say that my thoughts or views are invalid or whatever. Um, and even if what I'm saying is miscommunicated, um, I understand that if I'm having a conversation with the right person, we will understand each other. We will strive to understand each other's point of view. And it's not going to be some, I heard this one thing and I'm interpreting it this way and, you know, canceling you. And you know what? Some people might listen to this and think, oh my God, I can't believe you. You are disgusting. You are terrible. And like, that's another thing that I fear terribly because I know I'm not those things. To me, I'm not those things. To the people who really love me, I'm not those things. So it doesn't matter. But this is like next level sharing really like deep, deep fundamental beliefs that I hold that are in conflict with honestly a lot of what a lot of people think and how a lot of people feel. So that's kind of terrifying. Um, but I think this is a good place to end this. If you want to check out more of my art, if you resonate with me, I'm so happy about that. Um, say hi, please. That'd be awesome. Um, and it, yeah, if you want to check out my art or more of my offerings, just check out the description and I offer readings, intuitive readings, tarot readings, and I sell my art. I make visual art. Um, I love making vignettes and short films and doing creative collaborations. And if any of these concepts are near and dear to your heart, then, uh, then I'm relieved to be in connection in this way. So thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me your time and your presence, holding me in this, sharing this. It means a lot. And see you. See you next time.